Welcome to episode three of Canutillo Combos, the official Canutillo ISD podcast. We're happy today to be on uh, a location here at Canutillo Middle School to really celebrate what uh, we're calling the best weekend ever for Canutillo ISD. And uh, that is... uh, What middle school? <laughs> kind of Theo Middle School here, right? Yeah, we're, Steam Academy. We're, Steam, Steam Academy. Steam Academy. Yeah, we're, we're, Steam Academy. And we're, we're, we're on Bosque Road, right? We're in, in historic Bosque Road where, where it all started. And um, great stuff happening here. And really great stuff happening throughout the school district. We're, we're uh, still sort of um, on, a, on a high here on the news from the weekend. Um, that kind of TUISD is the only school district in Region 19 to be back to back to back A rated by the Texas Association. Yeah. Yay. Yay. So that triple A rating <laughs> means that that kind of TUISD is not only a high performing district, it has been a high performing district and it remains a high performing district. So we're, we're really uh, happy to to celebrate all the success, all the, the work that has been done in campuses like, like this one here at Canotillo at, uh, Steam Academy, at, at every single corner of the, of the school district. Dr. Galaviz, what does this mean? What does is, what is, uh, the AAA rating mean for, for this community? What does AAA mean back to back to back? It, it means we have stellar staff, teachers, administrators, Mr. Juarez, yourself, who come together to do what's right for kids because kids deserve it. Just like we're in the, one of the, this is where the high school started, right, Mr. Juarez? Correct, correct. So this was the high school at the time. And now the high school's on desert, now CMS is here. So again, it just means we're doing great things here at Dental Field because we're giving kids opportunities. Like Mr. Juarez, what year did you graduate? Class of 1996. 1996. Wow. <laughs> 1996. So you got to think of every all the history that that has started and the growth that's happening on the other side and, uh, by Abundant, the growth that's happening by Reyes, and it's all coming together for for not only for Cano Theo, but but for for our nation. And that's what we're about. So, you know, I commend the staff, the teachers, the administrators for, for, because, because that grade means a life. So when we're talking about that A, that means quality. That means we're adding quality of life for, for all our kids and this community. Dr. Kearney, how do we get to, to this, this level? You know, we, if we think of the kind of deal of 20 years ago, we were a school district that was performing like every other school district does, but we're, we're now performing at a high standard. How do we get here and what what does it take to become an A school district? Um, the word that comes to mind for me is uh, that we're building capacity in our teachers and our leaders. Uh, we're doing whatever it takes to ensure that they have the tools that they need uh, to be successful in the classroom. It's not that that wasn't being done year, years before, but it's just, I think we're doing it with more intentionality. Um, we're having great conversations with our principals about what they need and how we can support them better. We're looking at data, we're doing data digs. We've been very consistent in our approaches over the last several years. And I think that we're um, building momentum because of all of the great work. Uh, that we're doing. It hasn't been easy as we know uh, with the pandemic and all of that, but our teachers didn't use that as an excuse. So as a district, we don't make excuses. We do whatever it takes uh, to ensure that we support students and ensure that they're successful um, in all that they do. Um, I feel like we have something very special here in Canutillo. We really care about kids in ways that I don't think that other districts do. I'm sure that they do. Um, But I know that we, we really look at our kids and what they need, and we really um, do what we feel is best for them, no matter what it takes. And um, we love our kids, and that's why we're here. So and I think that that's made a big difference. Yeah, for and you us. know, the kids is really where where it's at. They're the ones performing here. Right. And, and uh, I did a media interview yesterday about our AAA rating, and they asked about the pandemic specifically. You know, uh, uh, Mr. Judge, uh, as someone is on on a campus here. Um, you know, I think we expected maybe a lower than normal performance because of the pandemic. 
but her kids really just rose up to the occasion and showed grit and determination. Uh, you know, does this mean something to them? Like being being in a school district that is rated highly, do they take pride in 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 knowing that they're part of a community that values education in this manner? Um, at, well, absolutely. First, you know, one of the things that we, we always talk about with the kids, um, you know, daily, I, I, as I'm walking the hallways, we're a campus of champions and uh, they know how competitive I am and they take that same nature with their academics as well. And uh, we, we have conversations, I mean, just in the cafeteria, in the hallways about how their, how their classes are going. And, and the teachers are encouraging. Um, we, we invite community, we invite their parents to understand what is, what is occurring in the classrooms as well. And ultimately, it's just them getting that experience, that, that, that real world hands-on experience that we've been talking about um, with our teachers and not letting our kids go backwards. That's something that we, we truly preach to our teachers. Our kids will not go backwards. And if they, if you seem, if they look like they are, if they seem that they're going backwards, let's let's figure out how we're going to get them back forwards and so the data that we look at the um uh just being positive with them that that goes a long way as well so um I, kids do understand um what it means to be in a district like this i mean i i'd like to add though and, and what's what's unique about our our schools especially the steam academy the campus of champions and ams the, the medical academy is Mr. Juarez graduated in 1996, I, me, 1984. That kind of learning, it's not the same in right. 2022. Mm -hmm. So the learning that the STEAM Academy with robotics, with coding, with what else, Mr. Judge? They've, um, they have built drones. Um, oh. They've hacked into drones, yeah. um, <laughs> which is really amazing. Um, we launched rockets. Launch yeah. rockets. Oh, great! Yeah, absolutely. Launching yeah, rockets. It, it, I think you bring up a great point because I think there's there's this perception from especially parents, right, that haven't been in a classroom in in decades, and they think learning is sit and get, right? They 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 imagine rows of of desks, mm -hmm. a teacher in the front with in a in a chalkboard, and that type of teaching is not only not present anymore, it's not effective, right? That's not the type of learning that's that that's that's really preparing our kids for the future uh, and we're seeing it in, in uh, campuses like this one here at CMS and we're seeing the results in, in school districts like Tunnel TU ISD. Now we do have opportunities for growth right I mean we're, we're, we're very happy with our with our score and with our rating uh, but we do have some opportunities for growth. What what interventions are we looking at in order to make sure that we're performing at even higher standards in, in this year and, and moving forward? Well, I'm so glad you asked, um, and I really want to take this opportunity to, to thank parents um, because even last year we uh, launched our HB45 tutoring, which was required by the state, but we didn't just approach it as a requirement. We, re we approach it as this is what our students need, this is what we want to do for them. And so our parents were very supportive in ensuring that students were brought to whatever additional tutoring we were, we were requiring, whether that be after school or on the weekend or even throughout the day or during intercession. And so we're even going to be beefing that up even more uh, this great. year. We've uh, changed the schedule at the high school somewhat to ensure that students receive uh, the additional support that they need. Uh, but parents have been very supportive of that and our teachers have done a great job We've hired some additional staff to ensure uh, that whatever gaps that, that students have, we're able to close those gaps. We even had some campuses that closed gaps at 100%, and we saw that on their, on their campus uh, scorecard, which, which I believe is phenomenal. The growth that we saw across the district uh, was just unprecedented, and so we're just so proud of that. And so we, we intend to uh, continue doing the things that we've been doing, but also additional uh, things so that we can make sure that students are successful. Because, you know, again, going back to the Campus of Champions, we have Mr. Wadis, who's a science teacher. Mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. campus earned a distinction in science. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to go back to you when kids came back from COVID and, you know, they, you know teaching by, in front of a computer is just not, they're not hands-on as science is. What did you do? 
differently from pre-COVID or what? Talk, right. brother. Good Talk. question. Be, before I, I, I address the question, Dr. Calavis, I would just, uh, I would like to thank Anubio. I would like to thank all the teachers, all the principals, all the students, the neighbors, uh, for the support, for the kind words. Uh, you know, I, I've always said that this is not my win. This is Canutillo, the Canutillo one that night. Uh, you know, I have a very interesting story. On Monday when I came back, uh, Ray, our custodian, the first thing he said, he said, Mr. Juarez, we won. And I told Ray, that's right, Ray, we won. I didn't win, we won. So the biggest pleasure that I have is they, they see me as one of them. And to me, the most important thing, uh, and the reason why our students did so well in science, is there were three criteria that we followed in our department. Number one is to provide a safe environment where the student develops that sense of belonging. We see our students as a plant. We provide the conditions for the plant to grow. So that's step number one. Number two, it's all about building relationships. And when we talk about building relationships, we're talking about building relationships between the scholar and the educator the scholar and the peers, the scholar and, and the community, but most importantly, the scholar itself. Uh, we're trying to make sure that our students develop a character of self-responsibility, a character of integrity, a character of grit, but also a character of empathy and kindness and compassion. And the third component has been very important that, yes, we're very data-driven. Uh, we look at instruction, instruction that is student-centered, instruction that it's uh, inquiry-based learning. Uh, we do a lot of PBLs, uh, and also, we also pay attention to what Dr. Curley said, is we pay attention to our professional development. So when you have that three alignment, you have those three things, I mean, the end result is gonna be success, and we're seeing it. So I told, I told Mr. Judge, I said, uh, uh, Canutillo has been my home, Canutillo's in my DNA. And uh, we're very passionate, but to me, uh, one of the things that I would like to address, it's easy to get to the top, but it's more difficult to stay at the top. Mm -hmm. So Canutillo has been the only one that has maintained that level of uh, a rigor. Mm -hmm. So I'm just blessed to be here, Dr. Uh, Calaviz. And uh, what does it take? I would say, let's provide a safe environment where they develop, develop that sense of belonging. Let's build those relationships. To me, the biggest component in education, it's all about building relationships. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because I've always told my peers that students, uh, they will forget what you said. They will. They will forget what you did. But they will always remember how you made them feel. Yes. And that's what makes the difference. So I think that's the reason why we got recognition in science. You know, and, and we got a little ahead of ourselves because <laughs> Mr. Juarez is speaking, and, and he kind of touched on it. But, but you know, we want to congratulate him. That's yes. the, the second part of, of what Nate is the best weekend ever for Canteo ISD is that Mr. Hector Juarez was named the Region 19 Secondary Teacher of the Year. Uh, this is our win. This is not my win. This is our win. And, uh, the, the, you know, tell us what you, uh, you know, you kind of touched on it right now a little bit, but what was going through your, your mind as they announced that I was watching at home? I was not even at home. I was actually in the hospital. Uh, oh. I, it was fine. It's, it's, a, it's a sketchy procedure. But I was, I was lucky enough to be able to watch on YouTube. Uh, and even, be, you know, because there was a lag in the, in the, in the feed, I, kept, I got like five text messages from people that I knew that were on the, on, uh, there. So like, you guys won. You guys won. So I was like, I just waiting for the announcement there. Um, what was going through your head? What was going through through your mind as as uh, they mentioned they they said your name out loud? It's it's for all my community to see themselves in me. That wow. that was it. That was it for our kids to see. You know, if he can do it, if he was picking chili and onion, if he was homeless, if he was one of those individuals that had no food to eat, uh, and he can do it, then that was my thing. It's to me my biggest message in education and. and this is my why, why I do what I do, is to give our students hope, to have faith in them, and the most important, to give them love. I think those are the three things, the three most important values, in my opinion, that an educator can provide to the scholar. Uh, so that's what was going through my head, is regardless if I won or not, I wanted for Ray to see himself in me. Because when he told me, 
he didn't tell me you won. Congratulations. He said we won. And to me, that's priceless because they see me as one of them. And, and to me, that's what I take. That's to me the most rewarding Certainly. part yeah. of this whole process. So when they said the winner is. <laughs> What is from Caro Tio ISD? What what boom? What were you thinking? You know, when they said that, mm -hmm. it was it was just uh, to me it was an honor to represent Caro Tio. That that was it. You didn't say like holy. I <laughs> guacamole. Uh, holy guacamole. I know I was screaming. I, <laughs> spilled, I, I saw video. You screaming. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. what, what I was saying, so what I was saying was. They told us, well, you have to write a little, you know, acceptance speech. And I remember that I put, because I was going to grow the groceries that day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had one on this side and I had one on that side. And when I opened it, I said, man, did I get the right one? <laughs> So that's one of the things that I said is I hope I put my oh, speech in there. Reading three bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that, but I it was did. like oh, I was like, oh man, oh, no. so that was that's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, I hope I have my speech in here. Doctor Galaviz, what what does this mean for Tanti? I mean, you know, we we've had a stellar year. You know, AAA rating, best small school district in Texas, uh, and now Teacher of the Year, and 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 uh, you know, if I may say so myself, a great chance of again winning the state. Uh, title for Teacher of the Year. Uh, you know, El Paso has a great track record of producing uh, State Teachers of the Year. What does this tell, not not just Carotillo ISD, but more importantly, the rest of El Paso and the rest of Texas about what's happening in our schools? Well, I, I, you know, along with Mr. Vlades, we have great teachers everywhere. Mm -hmm. Again, a shout out to Ms. Ramos from Reyes, who also represents Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's not the only one that has that passion. He's not the only teacher or staff member or Ray custodian, cafeteria, or nurses, or bus drivers, or central office finance, HR, who, who have that passion for kids. And I think that's what separates us, is that it's, the, it's more than just wearing a suit. It's more than just having a badge. It's actually, what do you do with that in the end? Are you providing opportunities for kids? Does every kid see themselves in us? A kid who's picking in the field right now, do they look at Mr. Wise and say, holy guacamole, he did it, I can do it. Right. And so that's what you want. You want to provide hope, and, and we're that hope. For some kids, and I think again, that's that's the biggest um, that I take away. That you're talking about that a the teacher of the year. You're talking about lives. We have human lives in this building right now mm -hmm. that are learning because of Mr. Vibe, because of Chris Judge, because of this faculty, and, and, and that's huge. And that's and that's you know when you think about a doctor hospital room, right? The, the, the doctor that saw you, he's dealing with the life. Saw you on Friday and Saturday. Right? That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with lives. Right. And, and this is a long term. This is, and, and, and at the end, do we get our next teacher of the year? Do we get our next, our next principal, our next associate soup, our next doctor, senator, president? And this is, education is, is about endless opportunities. And it has to be dynamic, and not static. And that's what makes us, is we're very dynamic. We're not afraid to change. Right. We're not afraid to do what's right for kids. And you know, yes, Mr. Judge. You, you know, I guess speaking to what Dr. Galavis said, um, one thing that I know for sure on this campus, and um, I, I, I tell all of our new teachers this, and even our, our vet teachers, you know, be as innovative as you want. It's okay to fail in your class, and uh, because the kids will will help you and guide you as well. Um, and and but if they're innovative, they want to get outside that box and, and learn how to do a variety of project-based learning activities or just build upon that lesson. It's okay, and, and we're very comfortable with each other as a campus. Our teachers, where they could, they're able to go in their classrooms and observe, observe each other, and learn from each other. 
we like to share. And I think that's why, um, for one, we're, we're Campus of Champions and, and why we have a good rapport with each other. And, and they, they want to learn from Mr. Waters. They want to learn from, from the science wing, from the way on the other side of the building to the math wing on the other side of the building. They communicate, they collaborate, and um, it's just a great experience. I mean, I, I haven't seen anything like this since, I mean, it was since I've been in education, so. Great. Well, I, I, I would like to add yes. to that. I think one of the things that I've learned from being in this campus, and I've seen it at JDE, I've seen it at pretty much all of our campus, is the skills that they're actually investing in our kids, which is the power of imagination, the power of creativity, the power of innovation, and the power of collaboration. Uh, I've seen that, and to me, I think those are the, the skills that our kids are gonna need to address the three big challenges that we have, which is change which is the complexity to those changes, and which is a fierce competition. I tell my kids in 1970, we have three billion people. 2022, we have 7.5 billion people. So competition is fierce. So that's what I see in here. And mm -hmm. you know, I just wanted to add that to, yeah. I think that's what makes Canutio so unique. You know, and, and what makes it unique is the, the high level of instruction and commitment to kids that is that is evident throughout uh, our district. In every corner of Canopy ISD, we see this level of instruction. We see this level of commitment. And now moving on to, to a topic that we're going to be discussing on, on Monday, Doc, is, uh, you know, trying to match our facilities with that level of instruction. And, and, and before, but I also want to give kudos to the, our trustees, our school board, because yeah. we've adopted Lone Star governance. Mm -hmm. And every board member, every board meeting, we talk about student outcomes. And we have goals all about um, career and college readiness, reading and K through three right. and math. And, and those, we always lead with them. So our school board is more about let's take, let's let the administrators do what they do and not inundate our meetings with a bunch of stuff that they shouldn't be doing. But let's monitor what we're why we are here, which is about student outcomes. So I do want to give a shout out to our trustees Definitely. who have taken on that journey and continue mm -hmm. to push about kids good for kids yeah and 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 you know one of those topics they're going to be uh tackling obviously is this uh um uh, this proposal from the administration to call for a bond election uh we we want to make sure uh that we address the needs of the community we have four critical needs in kind of the uisd uh growth equity safety and security and student programming and those four needs are evident and 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 you know, we continue to thrive in spite of some, some of the challenges uh, facing us in, in those four areas. And now we want to make sure that we provide students with, with facilities that match that talent that's, that's inside our classrooms. Uh, what are you expecting, uh, Dr. Galaviz, on Monday as the, the board considers this? Uh, what, are we, what can the taxpayers and the parents in Cantillo ISD expect to see? Well, it, you know, it goes back to we're performing at a high level with what we have. Can you imagine if, if, if the wow. facilities matched our talent, wow. you know, what we could do? If they actually have robotics classrooms? Yes, yes. Um, if they actually have, you know, up the state of the art technology in the classrooms and at this projector I'm looking at in this, in this office. And he, he's doing what he's doing, right? Because this is what he has. Right. But, if he had if he were he could just connect and you know just do that at Starbucks you know and, and, and I've been I've, as we are we've gone uh, community by community talking to stakeholders about this uh, that's a message we, we hear right I mean you know there's great things happening in our in our schools and our teachers and students continue to perform at these very high levels in spite of the challenges that they have in spite of the roadblocks that they see in facilities and um, in um, you know you know concerns about safety and security and concerns about uh, student programming you know we you know we have steam academy here at cms mr judge and and you guys are making do uh in, in providing instruction that's high level and and critical thinking type of of, of, of instruction 
in a campus that was built in the 70s mm -hmm. and in a campus that was built for a very type different type of instruction you know and to let you know even in our our science classrooms they're they're so out to date i mean um they were doing a lab project and they're going from classroom to classroom getting water just stuff like that mm -hmm. i mean it's it's it we're supposed to have at least uh, what percentage of labs uh, about 75 percent labs and mm -hmm. for, per, for the grade levels and they're doing what they can they're working the best they can but just water that, you know mm -hmm. that's that's one thing that's necessary in a in a science classroom um, we we're talking in about it uh, uh, in our department head meeting and so I'm looking just to get uh, paper towel dispensers in there because that that's needed I mean mm -hmm. they don't even have t paper towel dispensers which is needed for the cleanup so they're being creative with ways that they can um, do their labs and clean up their labs and kids can come into their classrooms and they're in, in their in a safe environment as they transition to their next classes so we're working what we have but it needs to change we need to do what's uh, better for these kids and provide them what they deserve right you know last time i was here and visited a science classroom i remember how it was kind of challenging for the teacher to even move around in the classroom because of the way the students were situated and all of that and just so to, to have the teachers having the challenges that they do have trying to deliver that instruction with just little things like not having the adequate space really makes it challenging to do the activities uh, that they would really like to do in order to support student learning. Yeah, we're, we're I'm personally excited to be able to, um, if the, the school board chooses to call the election, to be able to share the the news and the impact that this can have, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be going out to the community uh, and engaging in a much more uh, robust way than we did in the past. We want to make sure that people understand the need, that they understand the impact, and that they're armed with the information that they need to make a decision based on what's best for their families. Tell, tell, tell me, Gus, you, you were, we were talking yesterday and you were saying the, the families at Reyes were surprised to see portables or not surprised they were like omg <laughs> there's no way we have portables yeah we you know we we, we and again we're, we're dealing here with with several layers of needs in our community right uh we have community like uh reyes elementary school in the cimarron area 79911 zip code where growth is the number one topic uh, over there right and and there's families that uh, are surprised at seeing a portable classroom, which is a reality for a classroom that for a school that is that is um, you know at over capacity. You know, we we just spoke to the principal at Tempeteo High School yesterday, and she was telling us they're at capacity already, and they're seeing their early uh, their freshman and and sophomore classes uh, at at levels that are unprecedented. So that's that school is going to be at over capacity very soon. And then we're dealing with, with uh, our historic community in Canotillo here on this side of, of the freeway that is dealing with uh, issues of equity, you know, and we want to make sure that we address those issues as well because we, we, we know that while we build new and modern facilities, uh, at these new neighborhoods that are coming up, that we also build new and modern facilities at these established neighborhoods that we've been serving for decades, you know, that that, that is not, that, that, that we're addressing uh, those issues as well. And, you know, and letting people know that uh, growth is coming to Canutillo ISD in every corner of the district. You know, we're going to be seeing it in our traditional uh, historic community and obviously our new new neighborhoods coming up. As we speak today, there are 2,000 homes being built in our district. I know, I can hear it in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live in the community and, and all I gotta do is go out the backyard, and I can see the tractors building all along wow. there, and and it's it's a great sight to see. It. And and I'm like, that's just a little part of Canatio. We stretch pretty much much further too. So uh, we're growing, and and the need is is, is there. Yeah. So we'll be coming uh, to the public with more information about the bond in the, in the next coming weeks. Uh, once it's uh, if the the school board chooses to to call for the bond election. We're excited to share the information, and we're excited about the best weekend ever we had. Uh, yeah. Again. yeah. Uh, Mr. Juarez, congratulations oh, again. Thank you. Class of 1996, what was your school sign? 
Oh, it's my, my what was the high school school song? Oh, you know what? Senior? It was the one, uh, what is it? Uh, because You Love Me by Celine Dion. No. Because you, you guys picked the <laughs> Dion song? But you know what? I, I, I would like to say, uh, Maestra Ramos, fue un placer. It was a pleasure. You know, having this experience with you, you are, in my eyes, you're number one in the region. Just keep doing what you're doing. It was a great experience, uh, you know, being part of this process with you. So, yeah, thank Ramos you. Is, thank uh, you, Ms. Ramos. Thank an amazing you. educator right here. Yes, elementary school. She was my son's third grade teacher. I mean, oh, wow. I love going into her classroom. It was absolutely amazing. She, she's amazing. She's passionate she's amazing. She's amazing. And, sure. and deeply cares about this community, oh, just like does. you do, Mr. Juarez. Yes. Right. And just like uh, our, I'd like to give finished. a shout out to Marty Rocha. Marty, Marty, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she recently retired, and, and Dr. Kearney took her place. Yeah, I can never awesome. really take her place. Though. I can never really take her place. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> you gotta do the movements, Jay. From what? here. Why do you want to give a shout out to to? She, she's a principal at AMS. She was a uh, uh, CNI executive director, curriculum instruction. You know, she's the associate sue. Uh, we went in when we went in with the pandemic, along with Dr. Kearney. Again, that's why it was so easy to bring Dr. Kearney to that to that desk. But um, she's retired. She's enjoying life. She's golfy. <laughs> she's gonna finish her doctorate in December. But Marty, we love you, and and good luck. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And we want to thank everyone for listening and sticking uh, with us through this whole podcast. We are excited to continue this series, uh, uh, hopefully next week. And uh, invite you all to join us on Monday and Tuesday for our board meetings so we can celebrate our students, celebrate our, our uh, teachers. Wow. Please join us in celebrating the best weekend ever for Canutillo ISD. School District. Yeah. Yeah.